Thank you all for watching. This is Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Summage of Nevada. We have a great uh, song to review. You know, you know our man. But before we get started, I wanted to say this real quick. We have just produced our first content. Wow. Uh, these guys who we hired are amazing. They're going to be hopefully our producers forever and ever. They're into us. They get us. And we're going to continue to produce more and more content quicker and quicker and quicker. It is uh, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, the American male, called American Male Endangered Species. It'll be available in about two weeks. We haven't come up with a price yet, price point yet for it, but it's going to be very, very low, because why? We want to put stuff out there. And everyone that's been giving us comments, we love them. The comments are coming in fast and furious now, and they're great. And no, no product club with fast and furious to Sydney, by the way. But we love what you guys are doing. We appreciate it. And for everyone on our email list, be prepared. You're going to get an email asking if you would like to buy the content. There will be a discount for those that are on our list that have been our loyal fans. And we're going to go forward from there. So again, it's coming out in about two, three weeks. Um, endangered male, the uh, American male, the endangered species. It's about an hour, hour and 15 long. It's packed with me, all of me, basically. And we want your comments. We want your thoughts. It will be priced very, very low. Our goal is to get it out there, and we want, of course, your comments. Here we go. Okay, we all know, I think the whole world knows, including Mars, you know, Saturn, Venus, whatever, that Kendrick Lamar has released a new album. Okay, the album, of course, is called Damn, and the song we liked was called Fear. Now, this was released about a month ago, April, tw uh, April 12th, so like five weeks ago, and it's been exploded. This song, they're calling the masterpiece of the album. It's about seven and a half minutes long, and it has multiple perspectives that I found fascinating. And I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Kendrick Lamar continues to grow on me. I'm probably his oldest fan, probably his oldest white fan, but um, I think his music is incredible because he puts himself out there. And as I was telling someone very close to me, I said, it's no longer just the hip, it's the hop, hop, hop of taking it to completely different levels of understanding himself. And to Kendrick's credit, he puts himself out there raw. And I respect that, and I appreciate that. And the lyrics are like pure gold because they're, they're honest. They're like daggers to the heart. You can't escape. And he opens himself up, and I respect him for doing that so much. So here we go. As always, we pack a lot of information to our video, so I want to clarify a couple of things first. This came from my favorite free source on the internet, Wikipedia. Okay. Um, uh, April 14th, it was released, and there is, the song begins with, he gets a voicemail from his cousin, Carl Duckworth, who talks about a passage from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, that's the Hebrew Bible. So, and that's the fifth book of the Torah, T-O-R-A-H, which is a section of the Hebrew Bible. And he quotes 28.28, .28, which is basically about the blessings and the curse but in that segment, he's talking to God, and he's talking to the Jewish people, is giving them a list of curses if they don't follow through on following his commandments and being an appropriate people. I'm going to get into that later. Now, the first first, the way Lamar breaks it down was he gets this, he gets this, the voicemail first, and then he gets the first verse is about him experiencing the fear that he has as a young child with a strict mom. Okay, that's first one. Second verse is Lamar expressing his fears of dying as a teen at a young age. So it's 7, 17, and then 27. That's how he bridges it. And then he talks about the gang banging that he was involved with and the police brutality and where he came from out of Compton, of course. The third verse, which is the most interesting because it's the one he's really hanging out there on the ledge, so to speak, is Lamar's exploring the anxieties he showed in the third video, on um, his third album, To Pimp a Butterfly, and his lack of self-confidence in himself and his abilities, and the fear of losing the life he has built for himself. Interestingly enough, he then quotes in one of the lyrics from the book of Job, which is about human suffering, and how he tries to equate what he's going through with what Job went through. So be prepared everyone who's watching this for a biblical lesson, and it might convince you to turn, uh, you know, convert to orthodoxy and become Jewish after this is over. You never know. Well, it's going to cover all of these bases. Now, there's also an interesting piece as well. The song contains what's called backward vocals, which is known as backmasking or reverse vocals. And the backmasked lyrics have been described as the lyrics to the song's refrain on purpose. 
This has been done before, so this is not a new concept, but every once in a while an artist will do something where if you backtrack it, get a different voice out of it. They appear midway through the song and occur for about 20 seconds to represent Lamar going back to his childhood. And it's a lot of religious perspectives here. Here's it goes. It goes, every stone thrown at you resting at my feet. Why God, why God do I gotta suffer? Pain in my heart carries burdens full of struggle. Why God, why God do I gotta bleed? Every stone thrown at you resting at my feet. Why God, why God do I gotta suffer? Earth is no more. Why don't you burn this M effer? Okay, religious undertones. This is the classic question. God, why does man have to spend his life suffering? Why am I not at peace? White, black, brown, yellow. We all experience that question. That's the question for the last, under Orthodox Jewish perspective, 6,000 years, man has asked that question, Judeo-Christian. Why does man have to suffer? Why can we not be at peace our entire lives? And that's the question Lamar is asking about himself but he's spreading himself. Who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? We've discussed these things before in his other songs. What's interesting also that several critics have compared this album, and well, specifically this song on the album, to the 2017 Best Picture movie, Moonlight. Why? Because it followed a character in three sections. Childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Because of this, Patrick Lyons of Mary Jane called Lamar the best storyteller in hip-hop. So very interesting how that comes about. Interesting also, of all, these, of all the, the songs in the album, they're all one word. None of them is like, there's not long, 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 different titles, but generally one word, like here, fear. Now, here's where we go. The beginning of fear goes like this. Um, I don't think I could find a way to make it on this earth. And what's up? This is from Carl Duckworth. He's talking back to him. I know I'm just giving you a call, man. I know you've been having a lot in your mind lately, and you feel people that haven't been praying for you. You have to understand, here's where he quotes it. We are a cursed people. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28, chapter 28, verse 28, saying, The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. See, family, that's why you feel like you feel like you got a chip on your shoulder. Until you finally get the memo or message. You will always feel that way. Now, Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Hebrew Bible. The question comes up is, who wrote it? The first four we know were written by Moses. The last one came down to was, who wrote the fifth, who wrote the, uh, the fourth, the, I'm sorry, the first four written by God. The question was, who wrote the fifth book? Was it written by Moses? Was it written by God himself? But the fifth book is a really a lot of review of the first four books, where God is telling the children of Israel who are about to cross into Israel, if you want to have a happy life and a content life, follow my commandments. And if you do, all will be good. And if you don't, all will be bad. And this is the part of the curses that are coming out there. The two words, the blessings and the curse. And the first part of it is about the blessings. You do this, this will happen. You do this, this will happen. All good, all good, all good. Second part is all about the curses. And that's where this piece is coming from, talking about all the bad things that will happen to you if you don't follow the commandments of God. What are God's commandments? Be appropriate. Follow his lessons. What are his lessons? Show kindness. Show mercy. Pursue peace. Respect others. Respect. Use my name in respect. Enhance my name. How? Kindness to your fellow men. Makes sense. So what he's trying to say to Kendrick is, unless we have a sense of basis of who we are and what we are, if we're aimless, we will have nothing to show for our time here. You have to have a purpose. Clinical, that's Clinic 101, Social Work 101. If you don't know what you're living for, you don't know what you're going to die for. you got to have a sense of who you are. And for kids out there, I did not realize how many kids are watching these videos where youngsters, not youngsters, that's not really dating me, uh, but young adolescents, people in their 20s, I'm telling you this, you got to find the purpose in your life, otherwise everything turns to smoke, meaning you, you smoke your life away. And he has a great one, I'm going to start copying Kendrick in a later verse. Now, 
The beginning also goes from Charles Edward Sidney, I see Jr. says, why God, why do I got to suffer? Pain in my heart, carry burdens full of struggle. Why God, why God do I got to bleed? Every stone at you, why God do I have to suffer? Earth is no more, won't you burn it? I don't think I can find a way to make it work. Now, that's the reverse part. Now, here we go. Here's Kendrick as a seven-year-old describing life with his mom. But I want to point this out. I want, to, I want to clarify something. I beat your ass, keep talking back. I beat your ass, who bought you that? You stole it, I beat your ass if you say that game is broken, if you jump on my couch, if you walk in this house. With tears in your eyes, running from poo poo and apprentice, that homework better be done, your teachers better not be complaining about you, bitching about you, the pizza better not be wasted, you eat it all, them Jordans better not get dirty, but I not hear about you humping on Keisha's daughter. But I not hear you got caught up. I beat you. Better not run to your father. County buildings on my ass. Trying to take my food stamps away. I'll beat you if you tell your social workers, them social workers, that your father's here, he live here. And I'll beat your ass twice if you're still here. Seven years old, think you could run this house by yourself? And then it goes on with, you're going to fear me if you don't fear me, if you don't fear no one else. Kendrick's talking about himself. I'm seeing it through the eyes of his mother. Because so much of my work is going into homes run by single moms. Particularly moms of color. Well, I shouldn't say moms of color. That's a, I, I apologize for that. White, black, brown, yellow. I walk into homes all the time, and I see single women raising not one kid, sometimes three to five kids, by themselves. Any single moms out there, I'm not worthy. Because I know what you go through. I respect you. Get up every day, you put in a 12, 14, 16 hour day to try and make your kids right. And what Kendrick's really referring to is he had a mother that gave a damn about him. That didn't go into her bedroom and lock the door and guzzle down alcohol, or pop a vein with a needle, or join their ex con of the month club to have someone come in and molest him, fondle him, beat the hell out of him, beat his mother out of him, beat the crap out of the mom in front of him. So he'd go into juvie, go into foster care, go into one of those county prisons for kids. She cared about him. And I get that from what he's saying. Who bought you that? I bought you that for my second job, and I'm dead on my feet. You stole it? You, yeah, you stole something? If I find out that you stole it, I'll beat you again. You jump on my couch? Yeah, because that couch is on Pinkford on layaway. That's the only nice thing I got in my house. You jump on it and you break it, I can't get another one. There's no one here to support me. Your tears in your eyes, running from your friends? Yeah, they beat you up. Be a man. Get out there, take a beat, and show you got some heart in you. That homework better be finished, because I don't have the strength to check it. I'm so tired, my eyes are literally bleeding They're from eye strain. I just want to lie down. Teachers better not be bitching. I don't want to come, if I come to parent-teacher night and hear like, gee, Miss Lamar, Kendrick's a really bright kid. He's just not applying himself. He just goofs around too much. He's always fooling around. He's always fighting with the other kids. You know what's going to hurt me? That you're not going to have a better life than me? That pizza better not be wasted. You eat it all. Yeah, I got a little bit extra money at work today, and I bought pizza as a treat. A treat. Not as a given, a treat. You're going to leave three slices on the living room floor so that it gets hard and crusty, and I got to throw it out? That's breakfast. You don't waste no food in my house. Little Lamar, little Kendrick. Them Jordans better not get dirty. Yeah, because she scrapped and saved her pennies to get you, make you feel special for Christmas. She got you a pair of AJs. Better not hear you about humping on my, my friend's daughter. Keep your hands and your other things to yourself. You're not a man. You got caught up? What are you getting caught up in? Who are you chasing? The homeboys? The gangbangers? Or you wear a handkerchief, you wear a baseball cap funny. I don't think I don't know, you don't think I know what's going on? I'll beat you. 
and get the frustration. You better not run to your father. Oh, okay, let me, let me clarify a little history here. The destruction of the black family occurred in the 50s and 60s. Why? Because women that were on assistance getting welfare would have welfare workers come to the house. And if they were living with the guy and he considered him to be her husband, but he didn't fill out the paperwork, if they caught the guy living in the house, loss of food stamps, loss of, of, uh, of, of the welfare check, and the emasculinity was stripped from those homes. Because the men were hiding in closets. Knock, knock. Who's there? They lost respect for their fathers. Because these county, not county, the socialists are coming in. Knock, 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 knock. Go run to your father. He's hiding downstairs. He's hiding in the basement. He's hiding in the closet. That led to the destruction, partly of the black family. Because it was like, let's, let's destroy, let's make him feel less of a man. Not run to your father. County buildings on my ass. Oh, I know about county. I know about state. I know about city. Trying to take my food stamps away. People need those food stamps. I talk to people who get food stamps. That's part of my line of work. They know to a T how much they get. As a single person, as a family, as a individual. Oh, they know. Because in this country... People go to bed hungry every night. And without that food stamp check, you, you, as a mom, how humiliating is it to your kid goes to bed with a stomach growl? Mom, I'm hungry. Drink some more water. Fill up your stomach. So I see it. I see the struggle to make it every day and what it means and the stress and the drive. It's exhausting. It takes a, what it takes to do that. I have to be mom and your dad. So beat you, beat you. Not because I want to, because I have to. It's exhausting. And I hit you out of love and fear. That you be safe. How many times I've had in therapy, I'd say, I always say to the parents, if the kids will allow it, where things have gotten calm, you want to sit in, you want to sit in. And I'll hear moms will start to cry. Always the mom, when I say to a daughter or to a son, your mom never had the opportunities that you had. And that's what's killing her. That she had to kill herself in crappy, literally crappy jobs. And you're, and you're squandering your talents. And they, they say to me in, in, in broken English, if, you know, or in English, they start to cry. Because they love their children so much that they're, they have fear. Fear. And that's what I want to clarify. And then, seven years old, do you think you're in this house by yourself? Sometimes the answer is yes. I've gone to homes, and I'm talking to kids, and I got a, an eight-year-old girl telling me, I'm in charge, you can talk to me. And I'm like, you know what, honey, you sit next to me for the assessment, because I know I do need you. Ten-year-old boy, I'm the man in this house. Unfortunately, he is, because mom, the dad's long gone, sperm donor at best, and mom is like just fried, exhausted, mentally ill on her own, and these kids are stepping up to the plate, and they talk like adults, they act like adults, they think like adults, they present like adults, like many adults. Stand two foot seven, they can hold their own in a conversation, they know everything. You want to know? I'll find out for you. Boom. Get him over here. Get my brother. Get my sister. Let me ask my mommy. Know everything. You run this house by yourself. Yeah, when there's dysfunction, no stability, that's what happens. Welcome to the real world. So she's saying that. Because as much as she's trying to survive and take care of her kid, sometimes it is too much. You think you run this house by yourself. And the answer is you don't, but I'm, sometimes I'm too tired to fight you for it. And then he has a great line. I love I'm, I'm Kendrick, I'm sorry, I'm stealing this line. If I could smoke fear away. <laughs> it's brilliant. If I could smoke fear away. Because what he experienced as a kid has affected him 20 years later. And it affects all of us years later. 
If I could smoke my fear away, I'd roll that up, take two puffs, hi now, hi now, life's a bitch, put them panties. I don't think I could find a way to make it on this earth. What a great life. I could smoke fear away. Welcome to the world of addiction. Welcome to the world of prescription pain addiction, opiate addiction, benzoid addiction. This country is awash in pills and in drugs. Why? We're all terrified. If I could smoke my fear away. What a classic line. Two puffs. Gone. Because the fear of reality of having to confront real issues. Fear of life and of responsibility. Because it's scary. It's scary. And then, now, when you go into the second verse, he goes, um, I'm probably going to die walking back home from the candy house. These colors are standing out. Two. The Marcus was snitching. Three. House party. Fooling around with girls. Four. The witnesses leaving me falsely accused. Five. Me and your hood, your neighborhood was cool. Hood was cool. Six. Pressing the line, acting too extra. I'm going to get to that line in a second. Extra. Seven. Smokers are more than desperate. Addicts. Eight. One of those bats and blue badges. You know what that's referring to. Nine. Body slammed on black and white paint. My bone snapping. You know what kind of car that is. Ten. Maybe die from panic or die from being too lax. Hyper, 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 hyper. Eleven. Trying to buy weed at the apartments. Getting shot. Twelve. Trying to defuse two homies arguing. A beef that went crazy because everyone's packing. Thirteen. Thirteen things he talks about is your life being snuffed out. At seventeen. And the candy house, you know, refers to a drug house and colors, gang colors. We get that. And even the line now, pressing the line, acting too extra. I've heard that line spoken by young kids in therapy. What does it mean, extra? It means that it means too much. Oh, you're extra. You're extra sensitive. You're extra angry. You're extra loud. You're extra depressive. You're extra bipolar. You're extra. That's a, you're too much. You're extra. And from his perspective, life is short and grim with no happy ending. He's very fatalistic. Why wouldn't he be? Growing up in Compton, I get it. I, I didn't grow up in Compton, but he did. But I understand where he's coming from. When I was growing up, when I was 17, what was my fantasies? Wasn't that? It was college, marriage, kids, career, achievements, not an early grave over nothing. How many kids have I seen shot to death over a beef, over stupidity? Uh, you, 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 your, your, your polo shirt is, is really is the wrong color, or it doesn't belong on you, it belongs on me, or I like it, or over sneakers, it's something moronic. When your friend's snitching on you, or just the wrong place at the wrong time, or in the wrong neighborhood, where I'm in the wrong basketball court. And I get stabbed to death. I get shot to death. That you have to go through life with that kind of PTSD lifestyle, which is so underrepresented in Linder City. But you're ODD, you're ADD, you're oppositional. You know, you're defiant. You're a problem in school. You're not sleeping. You're sleeping in school because you can't sleep at night because you're having nightmare terrors all the time. But let's pump you full of pills. So... We ignore the issue of the stress of growing up in that kind of life. And I get it. And here we go again. If I could smoke fear away. And then I'd take two puffs. Hungry all my life. High, I'm high. If I could smoke fear away. And glide. Whatever I'm smoking, whatever I'm glug, 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 whatever I'm, whatever I'm, 
if I could smoke fear away. Take two puffs, disappear. And for all of us hitting adolescence, we've all hit it. I hit it 8,000 years ago. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to turn to drugs. I don't want you to turn to self-destructive behavior. I don't want you to slice and dice your arms, because that's not the answer. I don't want you to get addicted. I don't want you to get messed up or do something insane you can't go back from. Have children too early or STDs or kill someone or be killed or God forbid even almost even worse is not be killed and be paralyzed for life. I've had that happen to the kids I've worked with. Terrible. Now, here we go. Last one. When I was 27, I grew accustomed to more fear. Accumulated 10 times throughout the years. My new life found life made me all magnified. How many accolades do I need to block denial? My new found life made me all, all of me magnified. Who am I? Am I Kendrick from Compton? Am I Kendrick at Massa Square Garden? Am I Kendrick on a world tour? Who's Kendrick? What's, what's tethering me to the ground? Do I have real friends? Do I have real allies? Or it's like, Kendrick, you can do anything. Kendrick, you can do anything. Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick. No, there's no allowances on you. There's no breaks in your behavior. Do I flame out? He's actually thinking about this at the age of 27. How many accolades do I need to block denial? Do I believe the not so I can do anything I want? I can mistreat people, I can be wrong to people. Well, that goes against what Deuteronomy 28, 28 was saying, what his cousin was saying to him. Until you have a sense of perspective, something that grounds you, some kind of faith-based system, some kind of adult system, some kind of friendship system, that you know who you are, you are adrift. And he's recognizing that, and he wants to avoid the pitfalls, all the credit to him. Here, all this money, is God playing a joke on me? Is it for the moment, and will he see me as Job? Take it from me and leave me worse than I was before. At 27, my biggest fear was losing it all. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, he brought up something that just blew me away when he talked about Job. What is Job? Job is a book that is written, that's from the prophets, and it goes like this. The biggest question goes, Job asks, can a favored righteous person hold on to their faith when things go wrong? And in conversation with Satan, God has a conversation with Satan, and God says, you want to look at my, one, of my, one of my boys, one of my people, one of my soldiers? It's Job. And Satan says, let's test him and see how true that is. Let's test him. So God says, go. And what happens? In a very short amount of time, all of his livestock dies. Back then farming was a big deal. All of his kids died. Three friends come to explain, to comfort him, but basically spend the rest of the time explaining why he is having his problems. They debate, why me? And then God comes and says to Job, who are you to confront me? I'm God. Don't, don't compare yourself to me. Don't try to understand things. I'm God. I'm on a different level than you. And then God rebukes the friends and says, you're going to have to give sacrifices. Job ends up praying for God's forgiveness. And the end of Job is, he gets twice as much wealth, ten more kids, ten new kids are born to him, and he lives an additional 140 years. So it's basically trying to say, and this book has been debated so many times, is that God's presence is something we'll never really understand. But the question of who am I, what is God's role in our life, has been debated forever. And why do, famous, quote, famous book, why do bad things happen to good people? We don't know. I consider myself to be a good person. I've had terrible things happen to me in my life, dreadful things. And every one of you watching can relate to what I'm saying. Why do good things happen to bad people? What is my role with God? And, and interestingly enough, Kendrick talks about that. 
Is it for the moment, and will he see me as Job? Man's lifelong quest for understanding. What is he here for? And it's fantastic. The age of 27 in this song, Kendrick is grappling with such a concept on a philosophical level that has debated and confused and perplexed theologians for centuries since this book was first written. And he's asking, he's saying, Job, my suffering growing up in Compton, and now it's different, but will it be taken away from me, O Lord above? And my quick success, I mean, he's had some remarkable success with such a young man. Will it last? Will it, will it fade? As you all know, we know thousands of musicians and artists start here, go down here. Start up, up, wrong hand, go up, go down. Music life is fickle. And then he goes like this. He ends up like this. Scared to spend money, have me sleeping from hall to hall. Scared to go back from section eight, where my mother's stressing. 30 shows a month, and I still won't buy me no Lexus. Interesting how poverty makes you cringe. I grew up poor. I did not grow up wealthy. And I had to work at a very young age, not because I wanted to, because I needed to. I wasn't going to buy anything. And I remember getting, uh, you know, Nikes when I was a kid. It was a big deal. And I worked because, you know, things were very tough at home. My dad was not consistent with money. My mother had to work full time. She came home and then was a housewife. It was exhausting for her. And I worked, you know, odd jobs that I found. So I got a little bit older. I found other jobs. Always working. And to this day, I just turned magical 54. I am still very, very frugal. I get it. 30 shows a month. He's not like, he's still driving a Hyundai. I get it, because you don't know if it's going to come or go. People watching this video, let me tell you something. If something in your life is going well, relationship, job, school, friends, sports, enjoy the moment. Don't question it. Don't jinx it. Don't mess it up. Enjoy it, because anything in life can go like that. I often tell kids so many times, enjoy being a kid. Being 54, it ain't fun. Be 16, 17, 18, younger than that. If you can enjoy life, enjoy it. Will it all go and how soon? Famous fleeting. We come and go. We come and go. As Billy Joel said, you gotta be careful because I'll find in the discount rack. You know, with another can of beans. Beautiful song about that. How you're on the top, top. Top and you're on the bottom. And Kendrick is grappling with that. And for those of you, again, enjoy while you can. Then he goes like this. This part I can relate to as well. What is an advisor? Somebody that's holding my checks just to F me over and put my finances in debt? I read a case about Rihanna's account and wondered, how did that bad, how did the bad girl feel when she looked at them numbers? That type of uh, blank when she will make me flip out and just kill something, drill something, get ill and fill ratchets with a little something. Okay, let me clarify something about money. And I've made every mistake possible. Get a good account. <laughs> Done. Money, watch, everything that you make, I can relate. Rihanna's account, yes, yeah, stole millions from her. Know where your money's coming, know where your money's going. Money is not the end-all, be-all, but it can make life a lot smoother when you need it. Be aware of your finances at all times. Don't rely on other people. And if you do hire a good account, if you're lucky enough, every month you sit down, every, every, every month you meet, know where your money is going. Young people, please, today, take that stuff seriously. Here. Now, next. I practiced running from fear because I had some good luck. At 27 years old, my biggest fear was being judged. How they look at me reflects on myself, my family, my city. What they say about me, about me reveal if my reputation would miss me. Would the trickle down? What they hear from me would make them highlight my simplest lines. I'm being judged now. He realizes this. And do I fade away into obscurity? What's an artist's biggest fear? It would be an also-ran, a punchline on a, on a talk show. 
Will my music be judged after I'm gone? Have I left my mark on this earth? It doesn't have to be through kinship with the great music that he's putting out. Were you kind? Were you gentle? Did you volunteer your time? Did you give charity? Did you volunteer? Did you help somebody out that needed helping? Those are the things ultimately that will make you happy and make you successful long down the road, long after you're gone. Your memory will live on. What kind of person were you on this earth so you can enjoy whatever afterlife you're looking for? To make them highlight my simplest lines, what they hear from me. Will my music last? Will my lyrics last? Will I last after I'm gone? He's already realizing I'm not mortal. I am Kendrick, but I'm also human, and we all are. And it goes like this. I'm talking fear, fear of losing creativity, fear of missing out on you and me, fear of losing loyalty from pride. I don't want to forget who I really am. I don't want to forget where I came from, what I started from, how I had to survive those early days. Never let me forget, oh Lord, where I'm from. That's the biggest question people ask of God. Who am I? What am I? Where am I coming from? What do you really represent? Not a corner, but your inner soul. I'm talking fear. Fear that my humblessness is gone. Have I changed? Have I lost sight of Kendrick? That's what we all grapple with. If I have fame, do I forget my friends, my family, what made me special? Because fear, whatever it is, he's talking about fear, and then he goes, both is distinctive. Fear, what happens on earth, stays on earth, and I can't take these feelings with me. Why? He's realizing, you come into this earth alone, you leave this earth alone. And all the fears, fears, from the album song, it's all in the end a waste of time. What did I really fear? I feared nothing. I feared confidence. I feared being challenging. I feared making a difference. I feared extending myself. Fear. What was I fearful of in the end? And you look back and you, and you cry. But again, young people, particularly young people watching this, don't let fear cripple you. So many times in therapy, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Take chances. Don't let fear cripple you because in the end you're going to realize it was all in your head. Elvis had a ring specifically made, I think I discussed this in other videos, TTSD. This too shall pass. One day you're high, next day you're low. One day you're low, next day you're high. Don't worry about fear. The worst that can happen is you fail. You pick yourself up, you move forward. Don't stifle yourself creatively. Because then all you're going to get is this. If I could smoke my fear away. And he's saying, I hope they're going to disperse. He talks about this album with my 14 tracks carried out over wax. Wondering if I'm living through fear or living through my rap. My, through rap. And then he gets a thing, he gets he gets another voice over, damn, damn you, damn you me, damn us, damn we, damn us all. And then finally, Carl Duckworth ends up like this. He talks about the verse. And I want to clarify about this. He says, until we come back to these commandments, until you come back to these commandments, we're going to feel this way, we're going to be under this curse. But he says he's going to punish us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the two children of the true children of Israel. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. The children of Israel is going to punish us for our iniquities, our disobedience, because we chose to follow other gods that aren't his sons. So the Lord thy God chased them thee. But just like you chasing your own sons, he's going to chase you because he loves you. That's why we get chased in, because he wants us to be, because that's why we're in the position that we're in. Until we come back to these laws, statutes and commandments, and do what the Lord said, these curses are going to be upon us. We're going to be a lower state in this life than we live in here today, U.S. of A. I love you, son. I pray for you. God bless you. Shalom, which means peace and goodbye. And it's separate from means in Hebrew. Okay, what are the other gods he's talking about? Carl's talking about the gods of envy, pride, lust, greed, 
anger, cruelty, that takes us away from the words of the Lord. Now, he's talking about American Indians, Latinos, and African Americans. God, man is created in the image of God. All of us. There's no difference. God does not look at like just one race over another race. God looks at everything that he's created in his own image. We're all created that way because the goal is to sanctify God's name. When we do good, when we do good for ourselves, make ourselves happy, we're sanctifying God's name. And that's the point of this comment. This song to me blew up. The covenant of God. The covenant of God. What does that mean? The, the relationship with God. Also the name of the latest alien movie, which uh, I saw last night. Okay. Um... The confidence of God, who are we with? And you know, for Kendrick to be such a young age and grapple with these concepts is, wow. Usually you're at seven years old, you look back at your life. He's looking back on his life because he's lived so many years from being 27 that he's like, my God, I've lived like a full life already. And the fact that I'm alive, making music, making tons of money, have adoration of fans... I gotta, I gotta hold on to something. I'm sorry, I just shook the table. Sorry, but I gotta hold on to something. I gotta hold on to something. It'll be interesting for me to see what he's gonna turn out to be, Kendrick, when he becomes a father, when he has to change diapers at night, when he has to hear the word "daddy," when he has the blessing of children, when he becomes a husband and father, how he handles that responsibility, 3 a.m. feedings, and how his music will evolve on that point. But until then, we have to work with what he's given us, which is a great gift of self-awareness, self-accusation, self, I'm not saying that word right, but just self-awareness of who we are and to question it. He's grappling with it, and he's, what he's saying to us is, you, my fans, I want you to grapple with it as well. That's what fear is. Overcoming your fear to create your greatness. Thank you for watching. Please give us comments on the song. There's so much to talk about. I could go on for another hour if I wanted to, but I have to be respectful. So thank you for, <laughs> for Joe. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Let the comments come. Please continue. We love our fans. We're continuing to grow. We're going to be putting out more content, real content. I'm going to become hopefully more consistent as time goes on. Thank you for watching. Have a great one.